If it was not so tragic, it would be laughable, this political system that is in place in Iran. On, on paper, Iran is, um, has a parliament and um, there is every four year parliamentary elections, but the legal system has been designed uh, as such, there is no possibility of a competition uh, from outside what the government, what the Islamic regime considers as the devoted Muslims who accept the system of supreme leadership. And, and let me let me also uh, mention that along these lines, there is no political party that can compete uh, in the election. No political party exists. The system has been designed as such that every single candidate has to be vetted out by the guardianship council. Initially, it was a 12 member body that consisted of half of it were um, clergymen uh, appointed and half laymen, but they were all appointed by the Supreme Leader. So they, they exclude whoever that they don't like. Of course, this present Supreme Leader has been in power for 30 something years and is ruling the country with iron fist. But on, on paper, again, there is the, another, yet another body, Expediency Council and a Council of Experts. Uh, the role of Council of Experts is to select basically the Supreme Leader. That, that has been, you know, done 30 something years ago. Then every single uh, legislation that uh, even this so-called parliament passes has to go to that guardianship council. And they have to approve the, the legislation be before it becomes law. So with this system, actually, you know, there is no possibility for any piece of legislation that the mullahs uh, don't want to be in place to pass, basically. And if this was not enough, Khomeini himself, he created yet another uh, body that is uh, the Expediency Council. The role of Expediency Council is to somehow, you know, uh, act as a mediator between the parliament and the um, guardianship council. If there is a piece of legislation that goes back and forth between the parliament and the uh, guardianship council, and they can agree on that, then the expediency council will, uh, will basically decide. But who are members of the expediency council? Again, these are individuals that are appointed by the Supreme Leader. So you see, this is, this is really, uh, if it was not so tragic, it would be laughable, uh, this political system that is in place in Iran. Not to mention that the Supreme Leader basically oversees every possible branch of the government, every appointment, major appointment, for like the radio television uh, head or the police and army and everything has to pass his approval. You know, in, in uh, 1979, um, women's uh, protest uh, of which I was a part was taking place at the very beginning of the establishment of the uh, Islamic Republic. So people did not have quite uh, a clear idea as to what an Islamic Republic would look like, what to expect in terms of the laws uh, and uh, regulations and practices, policies. So it is different now. People have lived through all these um, so-called uh, Islamification and the policies uh, that uh, have the intention of basically making Iran the bastion of, of uh, Islamic revolutionaries. So uh, they are much more clear and um, much more disappointed and frustrated. And we get clippings 
every day of you know, protest spreading to different cities, small towns even, uh, and most notably, particularly in uh, the quote uh, and quote holy cities of uh, Qom and Mashhad, um, that are the you know religious soaked cities, and no one expected that even in those cities people are gathering and chanting death to the dictator uh, and we don't want Islamic Republic also slogans against the supreme leader himself because they see him as the main responsible person for all things that uh, are happening uh, in Iran both you know in terms of economic disaster in terms of mismanagement in terms of chronic corruption embezzlements that go and punish, so on and so forth.